Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from Automation dot com and welcome to another video from Azure Automation on C Sharp for Automation Testing video series. And in this video, we're talking about record types in C Sharp in the context of automation testing. So record types are a new types introduced in C Sharp nine, and it has a lot of potential and a lot of power which we can utilize in our automation testing as well. And so we are going to especially see in the context of automation testing, but you can use the same concept even for the application development or understand how the existing application is being developed using record types. And this record type has so much potential that it is going to reduce the boilerplate codes that we always have with our normal class types. So I will talk about all these things in this particular video. So basically C Sharp 9 introduced this record type as a new reference type that can be used to create classes or structs. And record types are distinct from classes in that record types uses a value based equality. Basically, in class types, there is no value-based equality. You have to do the equality by yourself. It always like an reference equality. But here, each and every types you can do using a value-based equality. And two variables of a record types are equal if the record type definitions are identical and if for every field, the values in both records are equal. Well, as I said, the class versus struct type is going to look something like this. As you can see over here on the left hand side, this is the normal usual class that we can create in C sharp, like person class. It has got a name, email, phone number and address. Similarly, the address property is defined as a separate type, like an address type, which is one mentioned below over here, as you can see the public class address, something like this. And you can see that this is an auto implemented property. It has a getter and setter, and you could able to potentially use the same class to populate the data as well as you could use the same class to get a response from an API, for example, and populate the data for this particular class type. That's how you could able to do it. But on the left hand side, as you can see, this same structure is actually being created as a record type where the syntax is going to look something like this. That's it. You can see that it has a parameter like name, which is the same name property as you can see over here. And there is this email, phone number and the address. And similarly, the address is a address type. And that's the reason you have an address record, which you can create something like this. You can also do inheritance if you want to do in the record types, but I'm not going to go deep into that at this particular moment. So this is the class versus record. So you can see that the code is much, much simpler. The declaration is much, much simpler. And the way you can use this class versus record is going to look something like this. As you can see, for example, if I wanted to populate with the details like record data, then you need to do something like this, like new of the name and where you're going to say Karthik email, phone number. So you have to define the property uh, name, something like this. And then you have to populate the data and then you need to create all these steps over here, something like this. But instead, because we have defined like a constructor parameters in the record type, we can directly pass it based upon the argument positional parameter, something like this. So you can see that I can just use like new of the person or just a new keyword. And then I can pass the positional parameter like name is going to be Karthik and email is going to be like Karthik at techie.co.in and the phone number and then the address. So because the positional parameters are supported in record types, you could able to just pass it something like this, as you can see here. So that reduces a lot of code as well, which you can't do it in the class type in the C sharp for the positional parameters, but in record types, you could do it. That is another advantage and that reduces a lot of codes as well. Well, as they said, these are the advantages of the record type in a nutshell. Record instances can have immutable properties through the use of pre-initialized positional parameters that we just saw right now. And the record types have a compiler generated two string method, which, which is going to basically give you a JSON structure, basically. And similarly, you can do the value based comparison, as I told you, and then it is a non destructive mutation, which allows the creation of a new record instance from the existing immutable record types much, much easily and records can be inherited as I told you before. So these are the advantages of record types. We are going to see the exact same advantages with the help of our simple API testing. And I will tell you how easy it is as a breeze to use record type for our automation testing. So for doing that, I have already created a simple project like a ASP.NET Web API project. And as you can see that this particular Web API is using a class like weather forecast and it has got auto implemented properties like daytime temperatures uh, and the summary. And now we are going to convert the exact same type 
with a record type and we'll see how we could able to convert this class type into a record type. So in order to do that, I'm actually gonna call this new keyword called as a record. So this is a new keyword introduced from C sharp nine. So you could use the record type, something like this. And then you can call the name of the type. So I'm just gonna call the weather forecast, let's call it a record for now. And then we'll change the name later on. And over here, I'm gonna pass the positional parameters. Basically, I'm gonna pass the date and time as the first parameter for with the date directly, something like this. And you will notice that I'm actually giving a capital D for the date. The reason being, as you can see in the usage over here in the controller, we have actually used the new weather forecast with the properties being called as date, temperature, and the summary. That's exactly what we need to do even for the record type as well, right? So that's the reason you need to use the same naming convention so that you don't really break the code behind the scene. Uh, and once this is there, I'm then gonna call the int and I'll call the temperature C. And I need a string of summary, something like that. So you can see that now that we have created all these different positional parameters. And then we are also gonna do this particular temperature Fahrenheit as well. So I'm just gonna copy paste that. You can see that now this particular record is pretty much equivalent to this particular class type. So if I just get rid of it, and then if I get rid of the record over here, we have almost converted a class type to a record type as you can see over here. So now that we have made that particular change within our code, now, what is the other change that we need to make in our code over here? And as you can see, this particular new weather forecast is now throwing us an error saying that this particular um, weather forecast is invalid in a different way. Like as you can see, if you just go over, it says that the constructor weather forecast has three parameter, but invoked with zero arguments. So basically, you can see that we are basically going to pass like a constructor for all these parameters, which we have not did over here. There is no constructor values that's been passed directly. We're just invoking all its parameters, something like this. So instead of doing that, we could just use like a constructor parameters. So I'm going to remove this braces over here. And because this is gonna be positional parameters, I'm gonna get rid of the date. And similarly, I'm gonna get rid of the temperature. And I'm gonna get rid of the summary over here and the two array is throwing as an error and I think because we need to use a parenthesis there. There we go. That's it. Now you can see that this particular new weather type, we could directly pass all the parameters, something like this. And then we have called the get weather enum there. So now if I try running this code, this code should work pretty much like how it used to work with the class type as well. So there is no big difference between both of them. And you can see that we have the weather forecast coming up. And then if I execute it, you could able to get the whole details pretty much like how you could able to get it. And you'll also notice that the temperature F, the Fahrenheit is also coming for us automatically. So this is how we could able to use the record type over here. And this is the same idea that we could able to leverage even for uh, API testing that you could able to potentially use it. And I have created a simple project for that. And I'm gonna show you pretty much quickly on that particular stuff uh, so that you will have a detailed idea about it. So if we just go over here, uh, you can see that this is the same code that we were just seeing, the web application one. And if this is the weather forecast, the code that we just saw. But instead, in this particular weather forecast controllers, we also have some more controllers uh, like get person, get person address by name, something like that. But the only important thing that you need to notice in here is that this particular controllers using the type like address and the person, they are basically record types as you can see over here. And these record types data is being populated in the seed data, something like this as we saw in the slide over there. So in a classical approach with a class type, you would probably do it something like this. As you can see, there is a lot of code here which I have commented. So instead of doing that way, in the record types, you could do it something like this, and you will see that we just pass the positional parameter with all the data that has been populated, and it's all created in a list of person type over here. And that's something that we could use it within our API. So let me just run this particular application, and I will show you what I really mean and how this application look like. You can see that this particular 
get person comes in if i try executing it it is going to give me all the details and similarly if i just go back to the get person by name try it out and if i just give karthik and if i execute it you will get that particular person so i'm going to quickly show you how we could do that in the api testing with rest sharp so i have created a simple test project over here and you can see that there is something called as a unit test one.cs file so in this particular class file the test class file i actually have created a simple call to our application this port number and i have created a rest client and you can see that i'm doing a two call like i'm doing two call for the person like with the name as Karthik and there is another uh, name like Karthik over here. Uh, so this is going to be basically two calls with the same person Karthik and then I'm going to get the response back as a person one and person two and then I'm going to uh, write that particular value in the test output helper over here and I will show you how the value is going to look like and then while we do a comparison I will also show you how the comparison is going to happen so basically record type as i told you before if you try doing a two string it is going to print out to you the json format of it that is not something you could do that in the class type and similarly if you do a comparison of the two record type it is going to do a value based comparison as i told you on a slide those two things we are going to see as an example over here so i'm going to put a breakpoint here and then let me try debugging this particular code and since our application is up and running it is going to do the connectivity and it should hopefully come over here and you can see that i get the person one with this particular response uh, and then if i try doing a person one over here do you see that we get a json format of the response like person type it has a name is equal to karthik email as this and phone number address something like that so it is kind of a json type the reason why this is happening is this is how the nature of the record type itself is and now if i try doing a comparison as i told you for the person one person two all i'm doing is like person one equals of the person two this is what i'm trying to do over here it's like two object being compared if they are in a class type you will get a different result but since these are the record type you will get the result as true over here and you will see that the integration the assertion is going to pass and the test is going to be eventually passing as well and now if you see the response over here you will see that the response is coming up something like this over here as a json format in the record type which is something you can't get it in the object type as well so all i'm going to do in order to prove how the classical way of c sharp class file works is if i just go to my code over here i'm going to comment this line of course and then i already have person class so i'm just gonna uncomment this code and similarly in the c data i'm going to comment these two lines of code and i'm gonna uncomment this guy and this is going to be populate all person which is what we require over here i'm going to stop this execution uh, and now if I try running it, so basically this time our code is going to use the classical uh, class file type. And now if I try executing it, you see that basically they both work pretty much exactly the same. So if I give the name as Karthik there, and if I try executing it, you get the response for Karthik as well. Great. And now I'm going to run the same test that I just showed you with a record type, but this time with a class type. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here. And the way it printed out last time, like a JSON, now if I try printing it out, you will notice that the person is basically like a person type, right? And it is not like a JSON format that you saw before. And now if you try comparing person one and person two, you will notice that the result is going to be false rather true because it is not a value based comparison. It is a type object comparison right they don't do comparison of each and every properties for you in the class type and now if you try running the test you will notice that that should be equivalent to is going to pass over here which is because the fluent assertion is very intelligent enough to do it for you but this is not the case over here it is false and now if you even try printing out the person one dot two string you see that it is going to give you the type rather the value inside the particular type like how we saw before so this is the power of record types in C-sharp.